Hi guys, Daz here with another episode of my Top 20 Selling Comic Books of the Week. It's long overdue. This is episode 195. And tonight I will be discussing the best-selling comic books on eBay for the week ending the 5th of September 2022. Now since CoverPrice.com came on the scene, they've become a go-to spot for watching eBay trends on comics and they scour thousands of eBay sales to coordinate data to spotlight the hardest-selling books. As always, guys, let's find out if you can beat me. It's not difficult. But before we continue, if I could perhaps ask you for a like, a subscription of course, a comment, a share, it all really helps my low grade productions. Okay, starting in at number 20 on our list and the last few weeks or so, we had a lot of news over the, at the San Diego Comic Con and this book sports one of the best Doctor Doom covers of all time from the awesome Mike Zek. Yeah, the visage of Doom after his battle with the Beyonder. And when Secret Wars was, of course, announced at the San Diego Comic Con, and with the Fantastic Four on the horizon, fans couldn't help but theorise that Doctor Doom and the Beyonder might be on the horizon as well. And if so, guys, this is a must-have book. Number 20 on our list. Like I said, from 1985, it's a book I own. Marvel, Superheroes, Secret Wars, issue number 10, and... Part 10 of the Secret Wars storyline. I said it, didn't I? Look at that fantastic cover by Mike Zek. Paid £1.50 for this in the back end of 2020 at a local second-hand bookstore, believe it or not. This book sold 21 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 91%, with a high sale of CGC 9.8, going for $227.50. And rolls on average now, $19. Yeah, I should really flip it now, shouldn't I? But no, that'll stay in my collection because I can see that book still going up further. We also had Quantum Mania news and that fired up this next book from a recent release and we're talking Ant-Man. Yeah, we're talking issue one of the 2022 run. Just released and it is an incentive book, guys. Number 19 on our list is Ant-Man issue one. The David Baldian 1 in 25 incentive. Said it before, my local shops don't get the incentives, not big enough. But this is a very nice cover. There we go, guys. Can't imagine too many of us will have that one. Well, issue two of that story features a potentially new Ant-Man in Eric O'Grady, the former irredeemable Ant-Man, a book I own with his that first appearance. And Eric O'Grady plans to rob the grave of Scott Lang. Yeah, he's not a very cool dude, is he? Well, this book, the sales started strong with 21 copies sold and a seven-day trend of plus 90%, with a high sale raw copy going for $56. On average now, they're around about $29. Raws are starting to fall, though, and on average, they're around about 28 bucks. Okay, number 18 on our list, and more San Diego Comic Con news. Of course, we were given the fantastic news that Charlie Cox is getting his own Daredevil show. And it's going to be titled Born Again, if I'm not mistaken. Number 18 on our list is a big book when it comes to that. It comes from 1986. Yeah, and uh, this book marks the beginning of the fantastic run and the discovery of Daredevil's true identity by Kingpin. I was looking for this the other day. No joy. Fans are prepping for the event. Number 18 on our list from 1986 is Daredevil, issue 227. The start of that Born Again run and the issue where Kingpin discovers Daredevil's true identity. Which I can't wait because I'm a big fan of the Netflix Marvel shows. To me, some of the best Marvel shows out there. This book. Sold 31 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 128%, with a high sale CGC 9.8, going for $635, up from last time's 400 for 9.8. Rolls on average now, $24. Okay. This book already went for a hefty sum, but of course, with news of Secret Wars, it's had some renewed love. It is the biggest book of the run, from 1984, number 17 on our list. Yeah, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars, issue number eight, guys. The origin 
of the black symbiote costume that becomes Venom. Fans are speculating we might see that. The second appearance of Spider-Woman, who is Julia Carpenter. Now, bear with me, guys. Spider-Man's new black costume is explained as an alien costume. And Spider-Man's black costume first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man issue 252, which I own. And then Marvel Team-Up 141 and Spectacular Spider-Man issue 90, which were all published in May of 1984, seven months before the release of this book which came in December. However, in Marvel's continuity, and that's the important thing, the events in Secret Wars 8 take place before all those other issues. This is a big book all the way, guys. This book sold 17 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 119%, with a high sale CGC 9.8 going for $850 and rolls on average now, a whopping $147. Wow. Mine's probably... A fine plus. We got a, 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 a. Where is it? There is a very, very faint uh, crease line that comes across here, um, but uh, it's a spectacular copy. Other than that, and I actually won this for free from the fantastic YouTuber Joker sixty eight, and that was in November of two thousand and eighteen. Okay, moving on. Of course, I made a hot comic book alert about this series. This series has blown up beyond even my wildest dreams i missed out on all these issues but i love the premise basically we're talking eight billion genies and we know that hit has been optioned um and it comes from image comics and the premise is basically everybody is granted one wish whether you want to bring back a dead relative or dinosaurs whatever something fun seems to happen to most people Number 16 on our list, though, is not issue one. No, because that is getting really, really expensive. Fans have turned to issue two. 16 on our list, 8 billion genies. And that is issue number two, guys. Great, great looking book. Yeah, I'm going to find some of these, but I'm not paying eBay prices. That's the kind of book I'll find in a charity shop eventually. The book sold 21 copies and giving it a seven day trend of plus 97% with a high sale raw copy going for $30.65. On average now, the raw's 17 bucks. Okay, number 15 on our list is another good book from Marvel 1992. Of course, we are getting into the Spider-Verse, uh, the sequel rap as such. And uh, of course, at the end of the first film, we got Spider-Man 2099 making a pretty hilarious uh, post-credits cameo. Voiced, of course, by Oscar Isaac. He is going to be returning for an extended role. And number 15 on our list is Spider-Man 2099, issue number one. The first full appearance and origin of Spider-Man 2099, who is Miguel O'Hara, of course. Appears as a preview as such in Amazing Spider-Man 365, a book that I own. And uh, I paid £2.75 for this copy. It's a mass-produced book, but I haven't seen many of these on my hunts over the years. Picked this up in the middle of 2017, one of my earliest hauls. This book sold 17 copies, giving it a seven-day trend plus 130%, with a high sale CGC 9.8 going for 150 bucks. Rolls on average now. $13. Yep. Great character. Number 14 on our list. And we're sticking with that Secret Wars theme. I spoke about it. People are expecting to see Doctor Doom. Of course, he's going to be there in some form or another. The other major character who's already been having some love because of that Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur animated series is The Beyonder. And number 14 on our list from 1985 is Secret Wars 2, issue number 3, and the first full appearance of the Beyonder in his ongoing human form with dark curly hair. Yeah. It's also the first appearance of a character called Circuit Breaker, Jess, uh, Josie Beller. Uh, I paid just a quid for this book, believe it or not, in one of my best recent hauls from Western Supermare. Check that haul out, guys. Key after key, all Marvel, £1 and under. This book sold 22 copies, giving it a seven-day trend, plus 150%, with a high sale CGC 9.8 going for $204. Rules on average now, 28 bucks. 
yeah, my pound's looking good there. And like I say, I fully expect to see the Beyonder eventually in the MCU. Of course, in the animated show, he's voiced by Lawrence Fishburne. And number 13 on our list. Lots of rumours still swirling around about Ghost Rider, about the Midnight Suns. And uh, I cannot wait for that supernatural element to come into it. Number 13 on our list, you've probably guessed it, is Ghost Rider, issue number 28, guys. The first cameo appearance of the Nine, a.k.a. the Midnight Suns team, who is Ghost Rider, which is Danny Ketch, Johnny Blaze, Morbius, Blade, Hannibal King, Frank Drake, Sam Buchanan, Victoria Montesi, and Louise Hastings. Um, it's the first appearance of the Caretaker, who appeared in the Ghost Rider movie and the Hellstrom TV show. It's the first appearance of the second Lilith. It was uh, Kiss Killia. And the first appearance of Meat Market, the offspring of Lilith. And I, I expect to see Lilith if we get that Midnight Suns team. I think we will eventually. Of course, um, who have we got lined up? Norman Reedus, uh, Norman Reedus as a uh, Ghost Rider, quite possibly. I could, I could see that working. This book continues to sell well. It sold 33 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 113%. High sale, CGC 9.8, went for $167.18. Rolls on average now, 20 bucks. Paid £1.32 for this nice minty copy. And that was in one of my favourite shops in Bristol, Area 51, uh, early 2021. I found loads of these guys. Don't pay eBay prices. They're out there. Uh, that's the non-polybag version. I also have the collector's item polybag version. As you can see at the top, there's still polybag. And don't forget, uh, Ghost Rider issue 32. That same run, the first full appearance of the Midnight Suns. Okay, we are moving on. And of course, we had the Black Panther trailer. And uh, I was excited because we get to see a little bit of Namor. Yeah, he finally appeared in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And his stock has never been higher. Or, of course, he appeared in the Golden Age to start with. And even the Silver Age books are out of the range for a lot of people now. But this one is affordable if you like the character. Number 12 on our list from 1990 is... Ah, I reached for it, but I don't have it. Namor the Submariner. Issue number one. It's a book I've passed on several times in the past. I may know where a copy of this one is, though. So I'm not giving up hope. I'm not a... Big fan of Premier Issues adding to the collection for the later runs. But uh, it comes from John Byrne, so that's always a good thing. This book sold 28 copies, giving it a 7-day trend of plus 135% with a high sale CGC 9.8. Going for $179.95. On average now, the rolls are going for around about 17 bucks. And number 11 on our list. And... Uh, as noted before, but the recent Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse merchandise leaks revealed a web uh, shooting guitar and Sp spider uh, punk mask effectively confirming Hobby Brown or Hobie Brown as Spider Punk. Yeah, he's coming into the amazing uh, into into the Spider-Verse two and number eleven on our list from two thousand and fourteen is a recent addition for me. Amazing Spider-Man issue ten and the first appearance of Spider Punk. A.K.A. Uh, an arachnic Spider-Man, Hobart, Hobby Brown. It's a Spider-Verse tie-in. This is a lovely Olivia uh, Coipel cover. Paid £1.44 for this book. Can you believe it? What's it going for now? Well, it sold 14 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 147% with a high sale raw copy going for $80. On average now, 57 So £1.44 was a steal. Not a bad start for me for once. But we're into the big top 10. Patrick, have I got anything to offer? Let's see. And we're starting number 10 on our list with another Marvel book from 2016. More news around about that Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer. Yeah, we had a first glimpse of Riri Williams, a.k.a. Ironheart. Number 10 on our list is Invincible Iron Man, issue number 9. The first full appearance of Riri Williams who suits up in armour, but not Ironheart armour in this issue. Of course, she first cameos Riri Williams in Invincible Iron Man issue 7, another book that I own. Uh, this is a Civil War uh, tie-in, Road to Civil War tie-in. Lovely Mike Diodato Jr. cover. I like his work. 
what numbers did this one do? Because, of course, she is getting her own Iron Heart show as well. This book sold 19 copies, giving it a seven day trend of plus 114%. High sale CGC 9.8 went for a whopping $615.43. This is the first printing. I think the blue may have a blue border, if I'm not mistaken, with the writing. Uh, there is a second printing as well. With I think you get a face on this seven, uh, on the issue seven, don't you? Uh, I paid eight quid for this copy. Nice book. I picked up uh, November 2018 at the Birmingham Con. I've had one or two others of this as well. So uh, they are out there, guys. Number nine on our list. Sticking with Black Panther Fever. Among the appearances uh, such as Riri and uh, Namor fans were also shown footage of Okoye and Nakia. And these char characters debut in this issue from 1998's Black Panther, issue number one. Yes, yeah, the first appearance of the Dory Milaj group um, and uh, Okoye, Zori and Naomi. Great uh, additions to the MCU. I paid 14 quid for this. In the middle of 2018 at the local antique center this book sold 16 copies giving it a seven day trend of plus 148 percent with a high sale cgc 9.8 going for 306 dollars and 87 cents i like this book mainly for the first appearance of a koi 8 we think it's going to be around for a long time in the mcu okay more news from the san diego comic con of course we were given news that we are going to get a thunderbolts movie exciting times ahead as we try and piece together who's going to be in that team. Um, I think the ghost is going to be in it. And I don't like the ghost. I think we are probably going to get uh, possibly the Winter Soldier. I'd like to see the Red Hulk. Um, I think we're going to get perhaps Florence Pugh's uh, Yelena Belova in it. To name but a couple of characters off the top of my head. Uh, I think we're going to get... Um, that evil Captain America we saw in Falcon and Winter Soldier. The name eludes me at the moment. But number eight on our list is, of course, the first appearance of the Thunderbolts team. And that comes in Incredible Hulk, issue 449. Yeah, the first appearance of that team and its members. Six and five, it was John Watkins, formerly Baron Zemo. Atlas, Eric Justin, formerly known as Goliath. Uh, Mac One, who was Abner Jenkins, formerly The Beetle. Songbird, Melissa Gold, who was formerly Screaming Mimi. Meteorite, Dr. Karen Soffin, formerly the second Moonstone. And finally, Techno, Paul Norbert Ebersaw, formerly the Fixer. I'm guessing we are going to be led, perhaps, by Baron Zemo in the MCU. Time will tell. Paid three quid for this minty copy uh, in the middle of 2017 at one of the local cons. I've had three or four of these. What did it do this time? Well, it sold 25 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 100%. With a high sale CGC 9.8 going for $2,160, uh, which is crazy, crazy money. The new stand typically sees a premium, yet even those are selling for around about $1,500. Uh, but it's the high direct edition sales that are unique and interesting uh, this time around. Great, great book. Okay, number seven on our list. Yeah. San Diego Comic Con brought lots of news and uh, one of those was a reveal uh, yeah, that we are going to get Cassie Lang in the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania movie. Number seven on our list is her first appearance. And that is, of course, that appeared in Marvel Premiere issue 47, which I own. But this is the where she becomes the stinger. And that is in The Astonishing Ant-Man. Issue number six, guys. This is a book I've been looking for for the longest time. Can't find it for love nor money. Well, let's bear with me on that one, guys. Yeah, there's your cover, guys, of course. I think it's a stellar cover, that one. I really do. And I've, I've, I've been busy, guys. I have been busy. I've, picked, I've been to two cons. And I've picked up a ton of keys. I mean a ton. And I'm piece, piecing together the keys. The last con I just shot a video of. I was there last Saturday at the uh, Collectomania here in Birmingham. And didn't think I did very well. Got home. And I counted 63 books. All of them keys. I think you're going to love that uh, that haul. I'm chuffed with it. Anyway. Astonishing Ant-Man issue 6 from 2016. The first appearance of Cassie Lang as the Stinger. 
sold 19 copies, giving it a seven day trend of plus 136% with a high sale CGC 9.8 going for $230. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con again, we were shown that we were going to be getting an Avengers Kang Dynasty movie. Yeah, that's going to be exciting as well, isn't it, guys? And uh, based on Feige's reveal, for phase six, this first appearance of the Council of Kangs seems essentially moving forward is going to be a massive book. Number six on our list is Avengers issue 267. It's another book I've been looking for the last couple of cons. I know I've passed on this one in the past for next to nothing. I just hope we get a good version of Kang. I did not like that comedic one we got in Loki Season 2. And if you've been reading the rumours about Loki, the po Henry Cavill is signed on uh, to appear in the show. And is it quite possibly, spoilers, could be Hyperion. Uh, that would be very, very interesting, to say the least. I'm a big fan of Henry Cavill. Want him back as Superman. This book sold... 36 copies, giving it a seven day trend of plus 100% and a high sale CGC 9.8 went for $299. Average now, that book's 50 bucks. Yeah. And uh, following on is the second part of that Kang, Kang Dynasty. Number five on our list from 1986 is Avengers issue 268. Yeah, the very next issue, guys. Love the pinks in that cover. I think that's the better cover for me. But both are pretty nice. I do like my Copper Age books. This book tracked 26 copies, giving it a seven day trend of plus 140% with a high sale CGC 9.8, going for $275. So this 267 is $299. The 268, 275. And more MCU goodness now. I have been watching She-Hulk. I have been entertained, guys. I know a lot of you out there don't feel the same, but, you know, I think the two lead actors for me uh, are doing a stellar job. Uh, Melasny is She-Hulk, and, of course, Tim Roth is uh, doing a really good rundown Abomination. I know Abomination is going to be naughty. He's another character I think will be in the Thunderbolts as well, by the way. Um, number four on our list, the book, when you think about the She-Hulk, is, of course, She-Hulk... Issue number one, or the Savage She-Hulk issue number one, our first She-Hulk solo series, and the first appearance and the origin of She-Hulk, Jennifer Waters. It's also the first appearance of Nicholas Trask. The origin of the Hulk is retold, of course. Mark Ruffalo's uh, bringing some comedy to that. I enjoy, I like the comedic one, but I want to see him rage again. Uh, this is a homage, of course, to Incredible Hulk issue one from 1962. This book, so 40 five copies giving it a seven day trend of plus 93 percent with a high sale cgc 9.8 going for 968 dollars and 99 cents wow pay 20 quid for my vf copy in november of 2017 again at the birmingham con number three on our list i watched the first couple of minutes but i got so tired i had to turn it off the other day i started to watch it image comics is paper girls on amazon yeah and number three on our list is the book Paper Girls issue number one. Yeah, simple as that, guys. A book from 2015. Basically, a group of girls get caught between two factions of time travellers at war with one another. I remember being in the Forbidden Planet and they had, you know, two pound grab bags and there were dozens of these and I should have filled my boots. Pay three quid for this nice minty copy, though. Early 2019 at the local antique centre. This book sold 51 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 101% with a high sale CGC 9.8, going for $130. Not sure how I felt about the early few minutes of the paper girls, what I do remember, but time will tell. I'll give it another try. And number two on our list, Marvel again from 1985. One of my favourite animated shows alongside the Batman original animated show was, of course, the X-Men X-Men animated series. And there was a sneak peek of that, apparently, at the San Diego Comic-Con. And in the preview, Magneto donned the same costume displayed on this issue's cover. Number two on our list from 1985 is X-Men or Uncanny X-Men issue 200. 
fantastic book guys magneto becomes the headmaster of xavier's academy in this strucker twins go by the name of fenris collectively of course we got that in the gifted tv show double sized issue paid two quid for this in february of 2018 uh professor x actually quits the x-men team in this book as well what numbers did that one do well, it sold 55 copies, giving it a seven-day trend plus 141%, with a high sale CGC 9.8 going for $189. And we are there, guys. We are at number one on our list, and no surprises, really. So much Secret Wars news. I've showed you a lot of the issues when regarding that superb run from the 80s. Number one on our list, guys, is a book that one day I will own, Marvel Superheroes. Secret Wars, issue number one. And this could be bigger than Infinity War and Endgame. There are going to be so many characters in it, guys. We're going to get probably the X-Men in Fantastic Four. They're all going to be there alongside the Avengers. There we go, guys. That is your number one book this time round. Again, I've passed on this one, I swear, for around about 20, 10 to 20 quid range. The book sold 66 copies, giving it a seven-day trend of plus 122%, with a high sale CGC 9.8 going for 1,050 bucks, and rolls on average now $66. How many did I have, guys? One of my better weeks, 12 out of 20. Stay tuned. Go onto my community page. I just stuck up a latest poll, a couple of mini reviews on things I've watched. I'd like to see your comments on there as well. I should have my next haul up on Thursday. It's going to be a cracker, trust me. Bye for now.